Hello and welcome to Tropical Scotland and episode 5 of The Car Diaries. As you can see, I am looking rather red like a lobster at the moment. That's what happens when you get 24 hours of sunshine here in Scotland. My Scottish skin isn't used to it. But anyway, we're welcoming our very first SUV of the series. And behind me here, we have the 434 brake horsepower Porsche Macan Turbo with Performance Pack. The very hottest Macan in the range. So let's see what this car is all about experience it in some gory Scottish sunshine and take you guys along for the ride. So working our way around the car, the Macan Turbo with Performance Pack has a few little features that stand out from the crowd. So firstly, you'll see we've got the massive 21 inch turbo wheels and the diamond cut finish, which I think are absolutely stunning. We've got larger diameter brakes than we do on the standard turbo, um, being the Performance Pack variant. This car has a massive specification, so you'll see it's got this sort of gloss black theme throughout the car, but we've also got plenty of carbon fibre. So we've got the carbon fibre lower um, door guards here. We've then got the sports exhaust on the car around the back as standard, which adds to the tune of that 3.6 litre twin turbo V6. It sounds absolutely tremendous. Not too noisy inside, but from the outside, it's an absolute weapon. We've then also got the gloss black rear lip spoiler and we've got the matte black rear diffuser, which I think works really nicely. So that's a two-tone um, black and grey approach throughout the car. You'll see we've got the pan roof specified, which is an optional extra. One of my favourite options in the car. It looks absolutely tremendous. And now I'm not usually one for showing you the rear luggage capacity in a car. However, I appreciate a lot of buyers out there. That'll be something that you want to take a look at. So as you can see, we've got a whole load of Matt's filming equipment in here. It's a very large boot. Plenty of space, equal size I would say to things like the Audi Q5, um, not that much smaller than the Q7 to be honest with you, so yeah, plenty of storage space in there, and you've of course got the uh, the folding um, rear seats there as well, and this has got powered storage which is nice. Uh, as we come round, plenty of rear room for the occupants in the back there, it's got three seats, still get the beautiful combination of Alcantara and leather in the back there with a contrasting red stitch in this specification and we've also got all the carbon fibre goodies as well as the turbo logo embroidered into the rear headrest which is absolutely stunning if we open the front of the car and this is probably my favourite place to be honest with you the interior inside the Macan Turbo is absolutely sumptuous it's got everything you could look for this car is particularly well specified Full electric seats, steering column with comfort entry. It's got Apple CarPlay. We've got sports exhaust, of course, and pan roof. Sports Chrono is standard as well in the, the um, performance pack. So really, really nicely specified. Um, so without further ado, let's take it for a spin and show you what this car is all about. So inside the Porsche Macan Turbo with performance pack, it's an absolutely beautifully specified car, as you'd imagine. Um, lots of options in here. There's about 20 buttons in the center console. So it's got a lane assist. You've got the sports exhaust system in the car, um, which is actually standard with performance pack. Um, you've also got um, the adaptive suspension as well. So you've got three suspension modes in the car as well. Um, so we've got comfort um, chassis selected. I can then switch it up to sport or I can switch it up again to Sport Plus. Being honest, my preference, as always, is the most aggressive suspension mode, as I like the car staying nice and flat, which is Sport Plus mode. In Sport Plus mode, the car feels like a car, surprisingly enough. Uh, it doesn't feel like an SUV, um, is what I'm trying to say. It is an SUV, it's, it's a, a big car, there's plenty of room, you can get five occupants in the car very comfortably. It's got a fantastic sized boot, and you are sitting fairly high up, um, which as I was saying to, to, to Matt earlier on today, I love because you've got a great um, sort of view of the, the road ahead, but you also notice so much more than you notice um, in the Lotus, for example, uh, and also uh, in the, the Panamera. Um, so you're just seated that little bit higher, and I think it gives you a better perspective of everything overall, and it means you take in far, far more of the scenery and things like that as well. But yeah, when, when you're actually out in the twisty roads, you can really chuck it into corners, four-wheel drive system does a fantastic job of controlling the power through all four wheels. Um, it's also got a display um, on the right-hand um, side here that can show that as well. So it shows you what power has been put through which wheel at any given point, which is really cool to, to look at as well. Um, and ultimately, it gives you a, a fantastic driving experience with the usability um, of, of an SUV.
So at the moment we're just in the standard driving mode. What I can do now is switch it up into either Sport or Sport Plus. If we switch it into Sport Plus, and you'll probably hear the difference straight away, so it automatically switches the Sport exhaust on. It also hold gears a good bit longer. So to shut it up a little bit, I'll use the paddles here. So steering wheel mounted paddles on the McCann. So whenever you're turning, as long as you keep your hands at quarter three or at 10 to two like you're meant to on the road, um, then the paddles are always where you want them to be. Um, so they're actually mounted to the steering wheel as opposed to being mounted to the steering column like you find on some cars. They are quite small paddles, um, same ones as you find on sort of GT3, um, Turbo S, things like that. Um, so they are fairly small, nicely finished, those sort of, uh, brushed aluminium, um, so really, really nice feel. Um, and they feel pretty solid as well. One criticism with Porsche is I always think your paddles could be that little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, as they're mounted on the steering wheel themselves, I suppose they don't really need to be. So now that we're in Sport Plus, we're utilizing all of the car's performance. So just shy of 440 horsepower. Um, of course, we've got the all-wheel drive system on the car as well, which allows us to really utilize all of the power regardless of weather doesn't really make a difference as it's 20 degrees Celsius today here in Scotland. But if I hold back a little bit, drop us into second, that's us at 30 miles an hour in second gear, and then just open her up, and it sounds absolutely tremendous. Before you know it, hey, <laughs> a little bit of air, almost. Um, before you know it, you're at it's a <laughs> my face. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. I've just shown you how flat the suspension can be. <laughs> a little bit of air, it's okay, we've got great ground clearance on it, so you don't need to worry about that. It sounds really, really good. Um, we were saying earlier, it actually sounds almost like an M3. Um, that sort of six cylinder sound, it's really, really nice, but not too intrusive in the cabin, um, which is the great thing about it being a, a great all rounder family car as well is you don't want a car that's gonna drone in the cabin and things like that. It's noisy enough in the cabin with the sports exhaust active. Switch it off um, and it's as quiet as you ever want it to be. But from the outside, it makes a really, really good noise, which hopefully they've been able to capture um, on camera. But yeah, overall, really, really cool car. Um, you've got sports chrono as well, which acts as a, a standard um, sort of clock on the car. Um, but you can obviously use it um, on track and things as well for timing laps. It'd be interesting to take something like this on track to see how it actually, how well it actually did. I was out last night with a friend of mine, he's got an Audi S3, um, and in terms of straight line performance, they're very, very similar. This is probably slightly quicker than the S3 actually, um, but yeah, really, really impressive. It handles more like a, a sports car or a, one of the performance hot hatches as opposed to the SUV that it is. Um, and performance wise as well, it's more in line with sort of Audi S3, RS3 and things like that, as opposed to any of your sort of SQ5s and things like that. It's quite a bit quicker than the, the SQ5, but the price point this car's set at, I suppose it should be. Prices start at 69,000 pounds plus options. Um, this car here was well into the 80,000 pounds with this specification. Um, so it's really got sort of pretty much every conceivable option ticked. As you can see, we've got the beautiful red seat belts, we've got the pan roof, the turbo logos embroidered onto the headrest and things like that as well. Um, and half leather, half Alcantara seats, which I think are standard in the car, um, but really, really nice. The Alcantara um, armrest there in the center, um, and also Alcantara on your door panels and things as well. So it is a really nice place to be. But yeah, in terms of usability overall, you've got two cup holders here. Um, you've got a really good sat-nav system, you've got Apple CarPlay as well, um, which is always great, um, it works beautifully, especially if you're using things like Spotify and, and Apple um, Music and things as well, you can get all of your, your tunes on there nicely, and I also prefer Google Maps to most of the nav systems, albeit the standard Porsche nav system is really quite good in this, um, so yeah, you don't really need to use um, Google Maps, but if you prefer it, um, for giving more up-to-date, accurate timings and things, it, you've got that um, sort of usability available there. So in terms of the performance pack over the standard turbo version of the car, um, performance pack gives you an additional 40 brake horsepower. 
I've not driven the standard turbo, so it's difficult for me to properly compare. Um, but yeah, uh, extra 40 horsepower, more is standard. Um, I've told you a few of the areas, um, different bits and pieces of uh, equipment that you've got as standard as well, like the sports exhaust and sports chrono as standard only in the performance pack variant. Um, you've also um, got the benefit of the suspension will sit 15 mil lower if you want it to um, than the standard turbo as well. Um, so you've got a button here which will lower the suspension um, by 15 mil, which is really nice. And again, just improves the sort of full driving dynamics of the car as well if you do so. Um, you've also got larger diameter brakes on the car by what sort of um, size, I am not sure. I would guess maybe 20, 25 millimeters um, difference. Um, but yeah, massive big brakes in the car. You can also upgrade to the um, Porsche ceramic brakes if you wanted to, but the steels on this um, are, are more than ample. We've got the red calipers on this as well, which I think really nice touch. Obviously, as soon as you go to um, the ceramics, you, you change to the yellow caliper. Um, but no, um, as standard, I, I think the, the brakes on this are more than ample. Um, and obviously, if you were driving the car very hard, which I wouldn't imagine you would be in a car like this most of the time, but if you were, the um, steels are cheaper to replace as well, as opposed to the ceramics. So yeah, all for the steels. Don't waste money specking the ceramics. <laughs> King hell. It's quick. <laughs> yeah, so that is, let's quieten it down. That's launch control in the Macan Turbo with performance pack. It is very, very quick, very quick. So yeah, whilst we're on these little twisted roads, now's probably a good time to end the video. Um, as you can probably tell by the smile on my face, it's a phenomenal car to drive. It's, uh, it's also actually available for sale at the moment um, with a company called The Auto Lounge. So head over to their website. We'll pop um, a link in the description below for you to check out if you're interested in buying this phenomenal car. Um, it's only done 3,500 miles, so it's pretty much brand new. And of course, I've driven it, so that's got to add something to the value. No? Right, okay. <coughs> anyway, moving on. So yeah, in conclusion, McCann Turbo, tremendous car. The main rivals, as far as I'm concerned, probably actually the A45, maybe the GLA45, um, and like something like an Audi RS3, which is not the cars that I was thinking would rival it at the start of this video, but it genuinely handles and drives as well as those hot hatches out there. Um, it puts a smile on your face. It's very flat in the corners. The brakes are tremendous and the performance is up with, with, with those cars as well. So yeah, it's, it's something certainly to look at if you're considering an RS3 or an A45 or a GLA45, um, for instance, because it's, yeah, I would say a direct competitor of them, albeit price point wise, it is that little bit more expensive. But yeah, get out there, drive a McCann Turbo for yourself and I guarantee you'll be driving home with the car and a great big smile on your face. <laughs> So thanks for watching episode 5 of the Car Diaries, we we'll look forward to seeing you all in episode 6 and I'm thinking it's probably time we bring a supercar back into the equation so let's get a supercar lined up for episode 6 for you and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Jump around. <laughs> 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 Sorry, <laughs> Sorry, Matt.